All right, uh, some news here for the Toronto Blue Jays. After 12 seasons in San Francisco, Brandon Belt is on his way north of the border. He signed a one-year deal worth the $9.3 million. And Belt uh, has uh, had a really good career in uh, San Francisco. Uh, won two World Series championships, but have been banged up the last couple of years, played just 78 games uh, last season. And so uh, the, the Blue Jays looking for some, some uh, left-handed power in that lineup as we bring you over to Studio 42 with Carlos and Mike. I'm Fran. And Brandon Bell, you think this is actually going to potentially unleash a power stroke for Brandon Bell? Well, that's, I think, what the Blue Jays are hoping. And I think uh, the power is, is certainly there. If you look at a 20 and 21, he actually, you know, those uh, two years combined, 38 home runs in a matter of 140-something games. So very important to go straight to approach. Mike, we talk about approach all the time, but we don't explain exactly what we mean by that. But it's basically your strategy at the plate. And I've always felt that Brandon Bell is one of these guys that got 30 home run power in him, as he showed those two seasons combined. But he has only hit 20 or more home runs once in his career. I'm like, come on, that's, I know there's more there. And perhaps the Blue Jays uh, are going to be able to catch light in the bottle. But an adjustment needs to happen in his approach. And this is what I'm talking about, Mike. I mean, you can't go up to the plate, and I think he does this often, trying to cover the entire zone. I mean, it's just too much to cover. You're trying to be a multitasker at the plate. I want... Brandon Bell and all the young hitters out there, be an essentialist at the plate. Be a minimalist at the plate. You know what you're looking for. You know, you have an area that you're hunting, and you want to be on time to hit the pitch that you're looking for. If Brandon Bell is able to do that, I think he's going to maximize that 6'3", 230 frame. I mean, he's a pretty big guy, and he should be hitting for a lot more power. You used to do that, Mike, when you come up to the plate. I mean, you used to crush us over there in Tampa, and you used to be a guy that sat pitches, and when you got him, you did not miss. Yeah, I, I think... I understood early on that I hit the ball middle in so much better than I hit the ball away. So my approach, it was, it was actually very simple. No strikes, one strike, I'm looking middle in. I'm looking for the mistake because pitchers are not robots and they will give you a pitch to hit. The question is when you get it, you got to make sure, like you said, ready for it and that you can execute your swing. I think with two strikes, things become a little different. You become a little more reactionary, and you, you do, by default, have to cover a little bit more of the plate. But a guy like Brandon Bell, I, I, I kind of want him to see him let it eat a little bit more. Yes. You know? And I do think the ballpark is going to play in his favor. Much easier oh, yes. to hit in Toronto than it is in San Francisco. So I think this is going to bode well for the Blue Jays and for Brandon Bell. Yeah, no doubt about it. And uh, the Blue Jays, they need left-handed bats, and they're going to need Brandon Bell to really come out and perform like he's capable of doing. Also picked up uh, Dalton of our show as well, the Blue Jays, to help uh, with that outfield. Another left-handed bat. News and notes uh, for you here. And we mentioned uh, Brandon Bell. Johnny Cueto, what do you guys think about Cueto? One-year deal, 8.5 mil with the Marlins. I like it. You know, a little veteran presence. That young staff is good. Alcantara, Lopez, hopefully Sixto Sanchez comes back. He could be a nice addition. All right, then. Corey Dickerson signs the Nats and Brett Phillips. Uh, the best laugh in all of baseball. A one-year deal uh, with the, the LA Angels. Carlos. Oh, oh, we got him. Look at that. Oh, hunting. Hey, you, you yeah, that? hunting pitches, baby. Actually, you might be able to see this guy do this this weekend. Oh, we'll explain. They're coming up after the break. We're coming up uh, January 14th. The polar bear for his foundation, Pete Alonzo, has the, uh, the battle for the bay down in Tampa. He's having a home run derby. All the proceeds go to the uh, alonzofoundation.org. Uh, Big Pete was on Hot Stove Monday with uh, Harold and Matty V, and uh, he, he gave us the lineup. I'm really happy that I got a few a uh, few Tampa guys in this. Uh, so Christian Arroyo, uh, I grew up playing against him uh, practically every weekend during travel ball uh, when we were kids. Uh, Kyle Tucker, um, I mean, I'm high school teammates with him, and uh, it's it was it's really easy for those guys. I know Gio Urshela when he was with the Yankees. He's uh, spent a lot of time here with the with the Yankees, and he's a Tampa lover. And uh, also really happy that the, the Tampa Bay Ray, great um, Carlos Pena's offering his time and, and talents of uh, hitting the ball a long way. He's going to be participating as well. And I know he's sweating, sweating right now, working, uh, working hard in the cage, getting ready for it. Oh, you better believe it, Polar Bear. Bear. So you better believe it, Goody Hurdy. Look at this. Look at that. Carlos Pena. Yeah, it's coming to a theater near you. <laughs> how about how did this come up? When's the last time you swung a bat, by the way, for real? It's been a while. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a while, man. That's why I'm working right now. So, all right, so, so t tell the most home runs you hit in a year. But you're, you're 46. 46. All right, so it's been a while. I am. You got these young bucks, Kyle Tucker. I know, I man. Mean, uh, the Polar, Polar Bear, what, what, you won the home run derby with twice? Yeah. You, yes. We, we're going to, I'm going are to. You gonna, are you going to deadlift before the round? Oh, you know I'm going to try to get ready. No, I'm not yeah. going to do that. Like,
like, like, I'm definitely not going to do that. I might pull but it bleak if I do that. You better believe that I'm taking it seriously, right? Okay, I'm going right. to well, prepare. Uh, I, I, but I only have a week, so, you know, I better so hurry. hurry up. <laughs> Sleep right, so fast. You got a message for the polar bear. If you beat him, don't let me win, polar bear. <laughs> you never don't, hear the end of it. Don't let him win. This guy's got don't a superhero, man. I, my money might be on court. Thank you. I'm the product here, and uh, if they want my product, they just got to come get it. Carlos Correa has got a huge chip on his shoulder. What do you think is the best fit for him? Carlos Correa signed 13 years, 350 with the San Francisco Giants. He has set the market even bigger than we thought it could go. Carlos Correa reverse course. No, I'm not going to San Francisco. I'm going to the New York Mets. Carlos Correa's free agent contract with the Mets. Still in limbo thanks to medical concerns. The Correa fiasco becoming an epic fail. I cannot believe it has taken this Long. I do think the Mets have had enough here. At least one other team re-engaging with Carlos Correa. Is it a likely possibility that he would actually go back? The Twins know his medicals better than anybody else. Carlos Correa back to Minnesota. This is how we think the Correa story ends. Ah, welcome to MLB tonight. Uh, say hello to Mike Lowe and Carlos Pena. I'm Fran Charles. I think Mad Dog has said it best. Uh, Nothing like it. back to Minnesota. <laughs> That's it. You Nothing like love, here, Mad you, Dog. You got to love uh, the Mad Dog. Uh, yeah, so let's go crazy. Let's get nuts on uh, Minnesota. Carlos Correa. I mean, he flirted with the Giants and the Mets, but Mike, he's staying home. What a roller coaster. I mean, uh, Twins fans should be ecstatic, first yeah. of all. I just feel bad. Maybe there's some Giants fans who are making Korea jerseys, and now Mets fans are making Korea jerseys. Uh-uh, going back to Minnesota. It's, wow, we got a lot to dissect, Carlos. This yes. is kind of a, a whirlwind of stuff going around. A, a franchise-type player, for sure. No doubt about it. Just an absolute baller, gamer. And now going back to Minnesota, props to Minnesota to, to, for making it work and being creative. Yes, we do have a lot to dive into, and I can't wait to do so. Yeah, and give the Minnesota Twins a lot of credit because uh, they were in on the initial talks, but the 10 years, 285 mil wasn't enough. But they, they kept at it, and they kept tweaking and kept working. And here they came up with a creative deal that ended up working, and it sends a message. Red Sox, shortstop Trevor Story underwent successful internal bracing procedure on the right ulnar collateral ligament in his elbow. That happened Monday. No timetable yet for the return. He was set to be the starting shortstop in 2023 with Xander Bogart signing with the Padres. Here is Chief Baseball Officer Heim Bloom with more. While ramping up the throwing, Trevor experienced uh, pain in his elbow. Uh, this was just before Christmas. You know, it was clear that surgery was an option, and that's ultimately the option that uh, we decided to go with. You know, he felt good throughout the season. This, that he, what he experienced, uh, and this incident was something new. They were not ready to put a timetable on it yet. You know, I, I certainly would not rule out a return sometime during 2023, uh, but it's also not something at this stage uh, that uh, we want to bank on. Um, you know, it'll take how long it takes. We want to make sure he's 100%. Um, but, you know, certainly with this being uh, the internal brace procedure and not a, not a Tommy John, uh, it does leave the door open for a return this season. All right, so Red Sox options at shortstop here. And, you know, Trevor Story is going to miss a big chunk, if not all, 2023 now with this surgery. Uh, but they do have options in-house. And Nico Goodrum, Kike Hernandez, and Christian Arroyo. And, you know, that's just within 24 hours of figuring out, you know, the fact that Story had to have a surgery. So